2 Corinthians chapter 6. We then as workers together, talk about the ministry, with him, God, Jesus, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Vain is emptiness, nothingness, void. For he says, I have heard thee in a, in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. It's not tomorrow. It's not a minute. It's now. We don't know when our lives are over with. And when you're dealing with lost people, you, 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 I mean, they're going to put it off. They think for some reason, you know, being a Christian, it's miserable, rotten life. And I'll put that off like my retirement. And it's funny to say people over the hill. How do you know you're over the hill when you have no idea when you're going to die? I'm 48 years old right now. If I would have, if I would have died now, being over the hill, I'd have been 24. If I lived, God forbid, 80 years old, you know. I don't know when, but now is the time. Now is the time to go tell those people about Jesus Christ. Not only for them to receive salvation now, today, it's for you to go out there and you to tell them, because guess what? They're going to die. And you don't know when they're going to die. So it works on both ways. That they need to be saved now, you need to be telling them now. Giving no offense in anything. So don't be offensive. Whatever ministry you've got, don't offend. If there are certain words they don't like, you don't use them. If there's a certain diet they don't like, you don't eat it. That the ministry be not blamed. Now you got to be careful. Don't do nothing that where somebody, a lost man, can say, well, that church... That Christian is my excuse. We talked about that last night. We got to live. Remember, we got liberty. But we got to live right. So we don't be an excuse. And we don't find a ministry blame. There's one church out there. They go out and, and they protest funerals and garbage like that. Hey, they're blamed. They're stupid. Let us not be like that. You know, people like for me, especially, well, he's a loud mouth and, you know, and there's no love. Well, that's a blame, but you know what? That's not a sound blame because I preach the gospel. I preach Jesus Christ just as Jesus Christ would have preached and Paul and Peter. That's not the kind of blame. It's when you can cause offense and blaming for the wrong cause. I mean, if you're down marching, you know, in front of a abortion clinic and holding signs of unborn fees, that's not the gospel. That's none of our business. Our gospel, you want to save those unborn babies, get the mothers saved. Get the teenagers saved. Get a, get a Bible study in, in, a, in a school before they get impregnated. But in all things, approving ourselves as ministers of God. You got to make sure you're approved, accepted of God, in much patience. A ministry takes patience. You're not going to get the results you want, and you're not going to get the results when you want them. You're not going to go knocking on doors, and everybody in that neighborhood is going to get saved that afternoon. Absolutely not. It takes patience. In afflictions. Man, you're going to get afflicted in all kinds of ways, in every kind of way. You're going to be afflicted even from other Christians. I know to be happy. That's part of ministry. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Rest assured that if you're going to get saved and do what the Bible tells you to do, you're not going to have a peaceful life. It's not going to be wonderful because look at what the life of Christ. He's our forerunner. He's our foundation. He is the found, He is the leader of who we are. We're Christ and. 
So don't marvel what happened to him, what will happen to us. In necessities. Necessities. Cities. We're going to need things. We're going to have to have require things. Everything's not going to be handed to you. You know, God's not going to put his hand down. Here, my son. You needed this. It ain't going to work like that. Oh, you, you 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 need you need people in your church. Well, boom, just like I do with no one the animals. Here they come, two by twos, ready. To, you know, it's not going to work like that. Lord, I need medical. I need medical attention. Oh, yeah. So, how many other Christians need it? Lord, I need money. And how many other Christians need it? But the Lord, the rich people, and all that. The Bible says, don't envy them. In distresses. Oh, you're going to have distresses. You're going to have situations in your life. Distress. SOS. Sound the foghorn. Put the nuclear silence in order. There's trouble. There's remedy. Wait, Lord, I'm saved. I'm a Christian. I'm doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And there'll be problems. Job was upright. A man that skewed evil. And look what happened to him. And he wasn't a born again Christian. He doesn't have. He didn't have the blessings we we have. He he didn't have any Bible. He was the living Bible of the Book of Job. Only the Book of Job, because he was living the Book of Job. In stripes, there are Christians today who are being striped with whips. Their neck is being striped with a sword, removing the head off the shoulders. Now, that hasn't happened in America in a long time, but it did happen in America. It did. The Constitution has protected us, and the Constitution has made us wimps in the name of the United States American government. In imprisonments. All over the world, people are put in jail for the Bible. Now, let's look at imprisonments again. Giving no offense to anything. Don't go to jail. Don't have a cop put you in handcuffs because you're stupid. Now, there was a case in California. I don't know where it was. A guy, let me tell you the story. Then I'll tell you what happened with the story. It was true to be. A guy was preaching to a bunch of people standing in front of the Department of Motor Vehicles. The place hadn't opened yet. And what he was doing was, my understanding was, he was just reading the Bible. Well, the cops came. They told him, knock it off. He said, hey, I got all right to be here. I'm going to do it. Well, the cops said, okay. Took his Bible from him and handcuffed him. And arrested him. Well, the court case came out to find out is that guy was standing on uh, public property. He had the right to be there. All rights to be there. And then the second obligation that they, they the objection they read, well, those people at the DMV, they had to sit there and listen to him preach the word because they had nowhere else to go. They had to stand in line. And that was, hey, no, you did not have to stay there. You could came back another time. So that guy was put in handcuffs. He knew where his ground was, public ground. So knowing that, he had full right and that the cops were wrong when they put the handcuffs on him. So he was properly in prison for Christ. I'll give you another illustration. I, myself, we went down to uh, this area by a school where, where we used to live. And we were told by the principals and all that we couldn't be there. And we were told by the police department we could not be there. So I went to the police department and I talked to them. I said, hey, this is the deal and all that. And they didn't want to deal with it. But they said, okay, you go back and talk to the school principal. So I went back and talked to the school principal. I took my son with me as a witness. And we worked things out. And we found a suitable location. I wasn't arrested or anything. But I found a suitable location where I was agree with them and they were agree with me. And we had four years ministry. I know of another group of people out of the church that I came from. In the, in the other side of the river. And they stood at, the, there was this flagpole. 
And they stood at that flagpole preaching and holding signs for Jesus. And the cops came along and said, no, you can't do that. Oh, oh yeah, we can do it. Yeah, and I understand, my understanding, and I could be wrong, but I believe they were arrested or had something to do with the police. Kind of find out that flagpole was public property. I mean, no, no, excuse me. That flagpole was private property. It was not public property, and they were in the wrong. You better make sure you have any wrong dealings with the police and possibly imprisonment. It's for the right thing. And not for being an idiot. In tumults, tumults, troubles, problems, in labors, it's going to be laboring in the ministry. There's some ministers out there, they don't do nothing. They just sit fat back, kick back, and collect the money from the people. And they don't do nothing. In watchings, keeping your eye open for the flock, keeping your eye open for the people, watching out. Hey, there's a wolf over there. Watching over there. Well, there's, hey, there's an opportunity over there. Or it's time for us to leave this place. In fastings. In fastings. By pureness. Pure. You know what pure is? Untouched by God, untouched by man's hands. You know when that snow comes down, you open up your window, you look out there, well, it's beautiful. Snow is beautiful on a postcard. As soon as that snow plow comes, as soon as the kids get the sleds out, and you know, as soon as the animals trample it and all that, it's no more pure. It's been soiled. By knowledge, you better know what you're doing in the ministry. You better learn how to deal with people. Now listen, the first time you come up against a Jehovah Witness, or you come up against a, a, a atheist, or you come up against a businessman, you may, uh, well, it's in, uh, you may fail the first time. Go ahead. You may even fail the second time. But learn from your failings. Learn from what you did wrong. And take what you've done wrong and make it better. Strong. Be growth. In the ministry. Don't always be a fool. Don't always make mistakes. But you're going to make mistakes. Learn from them. By long suffering. Again, that's patience. I'm trying to think. Uh, for God's not willing that any should perish. God's long suffering. You're going to want something. And you may not get it. By kindness. Be kind. Polite. Thank you. Yes, sir. No, sir. Sorry, sir. When a cop comes up to you, get your butt out of there. Officer Smith, I'm sorry to, to, you know, to do you wrong, do you any injustice, but, you know, by the document the United States government, the Constitution says this public spot, I have the right to be here, sir. Sir. A man goes walking by in a uniform of the military. Thank you for serving, sir or ma'am. Respect. Respect. Kindness. By the Holy Ghost. You wouldn't, look, you wouldn't think that'd be in there. When you go into ministry, you better make sure you have the Holy Ghost because he's the one doing all the work. You know, the Holy Ghost is what is giving us Genesis to Revelation. Men wrote the Bible. Yeah, men was the pen. The Holy Ghost was the ink. When you go out with verbal ministry, those words that come out of your mouth better be from the Holy Ghost. Or you'll fall up and mess up. By love unframed. Don't pretend. Don't stage love. Make it real. I st uh, I got to a point now. By the end of our our street ministry, I, I, I look at the people and it's like, man, if I could do anything to get them saved. And I even think sometimes just go ahead, let them say a prayer, but that's not right. I mean, I really love them. I really care about them. I really want to see them get saved. And then I get upset because they won't. By the word of truth. Oh, you got to have the word of truth. So what do you do if you have a Bible that's not the truth? What if you have an Eve Bible where she's cut out and, and 
added and subtitled and everything else. And we're talking today. We're in the hospital. We're looking at Bible verses that were completely wrong. Huh? I'm going to tell you right now, if you, you don't like it, if you know me, if you ain't got the King James Bible, you ain't got a Bible. I don't have as much grace as, as other men out there in the ministry. Some will say, you know, you can get saved by NIV and all that. I, I don't know how. I don't know how you can get saved out of a bloodless book. I don't know how you can get saved where they reduce Jesus Christ away from God. I know for sure you can't get saved out of the New World Translation Bible because that takes Jesus and puts him as just a man. He's got to be more than a man. You've got to have the word of truth. Uh, how can I preach? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and not hold in my lap the truth when I preach. How can I do these videos? How can I show my family the Bible, the truth, if it ain't here? I mean, an interesting study, a waste of time study, would be to take another Bible and go through Genesis to Revelation. Just pick any Bible we want any for, for the full time and just go by and watch all the places where they change and mark. But that'd be a waste of time. The word of truth by the power of God. So with the Holy Ghost, with the word of truth, you get the power of God. And somebody will come up to you and say, well, wait, we had a police officer come to you. Well, where's your masses of, of people? And where does it say in the Bible I'm going to get masses of people? Evidently, no disrespect, but that guy has never read his Bible. Because when Jesus showed up at the cross, is dying on the cross, he had John only his mother, and a few women there that were on their side. Where were the masses then? Where were the other 11? But he had the power of God, didn't he? All right. What more power of God was in Jesus' life? The 33 and a half years. Wasn't it at the resurrection? Tell me, what disciple was there waiting for the rock to be rolled away? None of them. The women came to prepare the dead body. They weren't even looking for a risen Savior. So, when you look at the Holy Ghost, the Word of God, and the power of God, Holy God, Holy Ghost, Holy God, Holy Ghost, what's John say the Word is? Who it is? It's Jesus, John 1.1. 1, 1. So there, verse 6 and 7, you got the Holy Ghost, you got Jesus, and you got God. There's the Trinity. In the ministry you've got to have the Trinity in your ministry that's a rhyme you cannot take out one those Jehovah Witnesses cannot come to my door with God and the Holy Ghost they can't bring their Jesus because their Jesus is not equal to the Trinity if he's not God that's why John says don't bring him in your house all right, here's one for my wife, her, her verse, her memory verse, her life, by the armor of righteousness. So that armor we're going to look at in Ephesians chapter 6 is the armor of righteousness. It's not something little you go down to the gun shop and you buy the sword, you buy the sword, and you get all that, and you have your little child all dressed up in a little costume. No, you're lying to the child. That, you got to take that child slowly by slowly and say, son, here's a Bible. This is a sword. It don't look like a sword. Really? Come with me next week when we go knocking on doors. We'll see how much this, how much damage. Come with us when we preach on the street and see how people get angry with it. All right? All right, come with us. Door knocking. Preach on the street, going out giving gospel tracts out of prayer. Come with us. All right, son, you know what you're doing by your walking? No, what am I doing? That I'm giving up. But you got your feet shodded with the gospel of peace. So you're walking with the See, that's. And when you got all those things together, the breastplate of righteousness, the head and the helmet of salvation, you better make sure that child's saved. Over his head, over his mind, over his thoughts, salvation. And that all that armor. Paul says is righteousness. 
And you know they changed that in other Bibles too. They, they got they got this thing. I wanted to get my wife, and man, I, I looked at it. It was NIV. I tried looking on the internet. And all NIV. And you'd be amazed what the NIV does to make that armor unrighteousness. I sure wouldn't want to go in battle with with a foreign Bible. Okay. The wet noodle. On the right hand and on the left. Oh, I just want to put it on my right hand today. My right hand is strong enough. My left. No, that's not what it says. You got to have both arms. You got to have both. You got to have both. By honor. Oh, everyone loves that one. DD. The Reverend. Pastor, the blankety blank radio hour, the My Name Television Ministry, www.myname, and dishonor. They're gonna make fun of you. They're gonna they're gonna taunt you. They're gonna hate you. They're gonna drag your name through the mud just like they did. Je well, what's one of the ones of the names of Jesus that they use after they cracked their knuckles on the loose screw that didn't come undone? Is that dishonoring? When they cry out Jesus Christ and they're not doing it for glory, we had a woman like that at the hospital. Woman, Jesus this, Jesus that, and anger. And then before we leave, have a blessed day. You fool. You're dishonoring. But there will be people that will dishonor you in the ministry. They will hate you. By evil report. They'll bring up an evil report against you. They'll say things that you did that you didn't do. By good report. As deceivers, they're going to say you're a deceiver. And yet true. And some will say you're true. Don't we have that happen at the, at the farmer's market? Be, man, thank you. You're here. God bless you, man, and all that. And he gets on. Yeah, man. You, know, you, know, you have no love. And one, one woman came up to my wife. I know you love him, but he scares me. As unknown, many people don't know who I am. There are people who pick up gospel tracts now at the hospital. They don't know who my wife is, but she's the one who put them there. God knows who she is. God's seen her do it. And well-known. Are you going to be well-known? As dying. It's going to be many times in your life you're going to think you have something you're, you're going to die of. I bet you Paul had that all the time. Man, he was stoned to death one time, came back to life. He was in a shipwreck, probably thought he was going to die. And behold, we live as chastening. That's a punishment. That's what a father does to a child. And not killed. I think Paul said he received 39 stripes. I think after five strikes, I think I'd be crying for mercy. As sorrowful. See, Chapter 6 needs to be taught. If you're going to start any Bible seminary, if you're going to start any Bible college, any Bible school, you need to, the very first class needs to be 2 Corinthians 6. You need to prepare these young men to what they're going into. A lot of them think, oh, open the door, we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to turn the world upside down. Sorrowful, yet rejoicing. Again, there's sorrow, then there's rejoicing. I've had many times in the prison ministry, man, just sat there and watched the guys ask Christ to save them. Amen. I stand out in a public ministry and this sorrow, they won't change. I've had great rejoicing where I've, I've had a man take his perverted Bible and say, I'm on a King James Bible. Amen. And then I had a man tell me, you know, He's a pastor, such and such, and you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. Mm, okay. As poor, Paul was poor. He owned a cloak and a couple books. That was his life, life stuff. Yet making many rich. 
either by salvation or helping them grow in the Lord. As having nothing and yet possessing all things. And that's the summary of the ministry. Now part two. This is one that people don't like. This is where families are destroyed. This is where churches are gone world. Part two of this chapter is separation. O ye Corinthians. Ooh, he calls them right out. All the Corinthians of the churches. Not just one church, brethren. O, o ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you. We are speaking to you. Our hearts are enlarged. We are in love with you. We are seeking your welfare. Ye are not straightened in us. You're not restricted. You're not narrowed. But ye are straightened, restricted, or narrow in your own bowels, your own size, your own doing. Now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children. I mean, Paul, Paul burnt, uh, born this church. These are his spiritual children. But ye also enlarge. Not a good enlarging. But ye, yeah, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. But ye are also enlarged. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You know how they were enlarged in Corinth? They had saved people and unsaved people together. We call that the mega church today. Nothing new under the sun. Nothing new. There it is. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? James 4, 4, Colossians 3, 1 and 2, Luke 16, 13. There are righteous people and unrighteous people gathering together in the same place. Friend, I'm telling you that your church has no business biting unrighteous people unsaved people into the church you have no business that's not their place the church you witness to them on the workplace you witness them to the family you witness to them out in the streets you witness them wherever they are oh i'll bring them to the church and the pastor will do it you're being lazy because you bring the devil's people into the church what's revelation 3 say Jesus Christ gets pushed out the door and he's knocking on the church saying, anybody come out? Look at the churches today. Listen, I'm telling you right now, the Methodist, the Lutheran church, they were good churches at one time. How did they get women pastors? How did they get sodomites? Because they let them in the church. They let them have say. They let them give the money to the church. You say, if the Lord ever gave you a church, would you, hey, listen, I'd rather have five true righteous people sit in the congregation, listening to the word of God, doing right, than having a whole church full, three quarters of them unsaved and don't want to do anything for God in the first place. And what communion, communion have light with darkness. Paul is speaking, hey, listen, there ought not to be so. It ought not to be so. Unrighteous with righteousness. And he said that about marriage too. You don't get an unsaved person and a saved person together. What concord has Christ with Belial? Belial is a wicked, perverse child. The Belial children in the Old Testament were to be stoned. Or what had... What part has he that believeth with an infidel? Now that's a famous word used by ISIS and a Muslim, infidel. And this is where they get their teaching, you know, and, and it's a wrong teaching. You know, if you don't believe in Allah, then we're going to kill you. No, that's not what it says. 
It, it's not, okay, Christian, if they're unrighteous, you kill them and all that. No, you you, you got to work with them. You got to live with them. You got to have a kind of fellowship with them out in the world. You got to buy groceries from them. You got to get gas from them, witness to them, but they're not to be in a church if they're not saved. Because, you know, the worst thing is that I've been in a church. The worst church you can be is where every single Sunday morning message is about how to get saved. That gets boring for someone. That 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 makes you a spiritual retard where every message you hear is how to get saved, how to get saved. Because people are coming in, being invited into church. you got to have messages with meat. Meat messages are not for the unsaved. Or what part has he that believes with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God? Now that's us. That's us. That's not the building. We've already seen by Corinthians. Paul's talking about our body. What does your body have to do with idols? Now this is in Corinth, remember? Remember Corinth had a thing where people were sacrificing the food to these idols and all that? Well, what are you doing hanging out with these Corinth gods? What do you see? Not only is the Christians coming, letting the, the unsaved people come into their church, but they're joining the 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 uh, okay, the, idol the idol worshippers. There they are with them. You gotta say sometimes. I'm saying that if you want to be a true and suffer like we just read in the ministry, they're sometimes gonna have to say, "Listen, I can't go. Why? Because you, you are doing a Catholic service." I can't go there. That's against my Bible and everything that follows that church. I can't do it. Second Corinthians 6. There's idols all around that church. I grew up in them. And that's what the Corinthians are. They're going over there and they're inviting them over to, over to them. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. You got that? You are the temple. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Now, this is funny because this is 10 years about before the temple gets destroyed in Jerusalem. There's that beautiful temple in Jerusalem right now. And Paul says, never mind that. You are the temple of God. You Gentiles. You Jews. You're the temple. God is indwelling in you like he used to indwell in that holy of holy place. You are seated in heavenly places. Wherefore, come out from among them. Leave them. Get out of their religious services. Get out of their, their idolatry. Get out of their, their functions. And be ye separate. Saith the Lord, not Paul. That's a command by God. Got problems with it? You you tell God, say, God, I got a problem with you saying that. But, 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 stop butting God. God said, be ye separate. And touch not the unclean thing. There's a lot of unclean things. But it makes it singular. But the idols were plural in verse 16. It's all unclean. All that religion, phony, bony, garbage, doobie. Don't touch. John says when they come to your front door, don't even let them in your house. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Oh, what if you do if you do touch it? What if you do you don't be separate? What will be opposite? I will receive you. And will be a father unto you. We're his children. And ye shall be my sons and daughters. Saith the Lord God. Saith the Lord Almighty. Oh, Lord Almighty. Sign it. God signs this through Paul. Not with only L-O-R-D. But L-O-R-D Almighty. Jehovah says. You will be my children. I will be your father. You better be separated. And he closes off the chapter in that one. That's a strong rebuke. But there it is.